Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail how to do a simple linear regression uh, using Microsoft Excel's Data Analysis Toolpack. Okay? Now, by simple linear regression, I mean a linear regression where we have a single independent variable and we have a single dependent variable. Okay? Uh, for the purposes of this video, uh, like the previous video, this we used this data set to do a correlation analysis. In the previous video, we identified that there was a correlation of 0 0.8. There was a strong association between Ryanair Holdings uh, and the Isaac Benchmark Index uh, uh, closing closing values or closing prices. Okay. And so we, we identified that there was a strong association between them. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to figure out what is the mathematical relationship between Ryanair Holdings and the, the Isaac uh, overall index by generating a regression equation yeah, where we have a single independent variable and we have a single dependent variable. So what we're going to do here is something It's very straightforward. We're going to go to data analysis. We're going to choose data analysis. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down through the data analysis options, okay, uh, until we find regression. And you can actually see here's the regression option here. And what we'll do is we just hit OK, and we get a pop-up window. Now, the important thing about this particular pop-up window here is this, is that we need to put in two inputs. We need to put input Y range in and input X range. The Y range represents the dependent variable values, and the X range represents the independent variable values. So with respect to the Y range, well, I'm, I'm trying to predict Isaac values by knowing the Ryanair values, so the Isaac is my dependent variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select from here down to the end for this column here, okay? Uh, you can see that's selecting from E3 through to E26, okay? And then for the input X range, I'm going to choose my Ryanair holdings. So I'm going to go from here down to the end, okay, down to the end here, which gives me my Ryanair holdings. Uh, there is labels in the first rows, so I'm going to just click labels. I'm not looking for confidence intervals with respect to my coefficients at this particular stage. Uh, so let me just define my output range. My output range I'm going to do in this sheet. I clicked the output range there. I'm going to click on the field, and I'm going to choose a cell to put the table output into. Let me just choose here the H cell. Okay? We could do some residual analysis and so on by selecting other options. Okay, We're not going to do that at this stage. This is just a simple linear regression, just so that we can understand the relationship between Ryanair Holdings and the Isaac index closing value. So now I'm just going to hit OK. When we hit OK, we get a table that looks something like this. Now, there's a lot of output here. Uh, but let's not have a heart attack, okay? We'll interpret this output now in a second. Let me just maybe uh, fix this so that we can actually see the table uh, and all, all of its values, okay? So the first thing that we get is we get some summary output here, yeah? Uh, and actually, you can see that what we have here is this uh, multiple OR. This is the correlation coefficient, yeah? It's actually called multiple OR here, so it actually modifies it a little bit when we have more than one independent variable. But at this stage, basically what we're getting is the Pearson correlation coefficient, which we ran in a previous video, and you can see that 0 0.80, okay? Then we have the OR squared value, that's the coefficient of determination, and that's 0 0.64. And when I multiply it by 100, it's 64%, which tells us that 64% of the variance in the dependent variable, our Isaac index scores, can be accounted for through the variance in the Ryanair holdings. Now, the adjusted R squared value we're not interested in here. Anytime we add in more independent variables, we need to adjust the calculation with respect to how we do this, or how we do this correlation, and actually how we square it. And that's all that's coming through here. It's just a slight adjustment for the number of independent variables. We can ignore it in this stage, yeah. But anyway, what we're interested in is we're interested in this table here, the ANOVA output table, okay? And we're interested in this particular table here, okay? Uh, which is the coefficients with respect to our model, okay? Let's maybe jump into the coefficients uh, initially, yeah? Okay? So what this is saying to me here is that the, maybe I'll write this down here, yeah? Okay? If I interpret these two values, okay? So what it's saying is this, is that Isaac... Maybe I'll make this a bit bigger, okay? It's saying that Isaac scores, okay, are equal to 1,397, let's say 0.36, I'll just take it to two decimal places, plus it's equal to 292, this number here, uh, 0.62, 
times my Ryanair, my Rye, my Ryanair holdings values. Yeah. So in other words, if I know the Ryanair holdings values, if I multiply them by 292.62, and if I add that on to 1,397, that should allow me to predict what the Isaac closing price should be. Okay. Now, one of the questions that we might have is this, is how reliable are these coefficients? Okay. Can we rely on them? Is it possible that they just happened by chance? Okay. Or is the, are these real, are these, I suppose, a, a true representation of the population that these particular values have been drawn from? Okay. So what we could do is we could actually have a look at the p-values associated with each one of our coefficients. So for the intercept, the p-value is, it's, it's 0 0.125, right? It's 0 0.125. Am I missing something here? Just come across, okay? It's 0 0.125, which isn't less than 0 0.05. So the null hypothesis for this coefficient is that the coefficient should be equal to zero. The alternative is that's not equal to zero, and actually it's equal to 1397. For me to reject the null hypothesis, well, we know that the rule goes, if the p is low, the null must go. So if I set the significance level at the 0 0.05 significance level, or the 5% significance level, you can see the p-value ain't less than it. So there's insufficient evidence to suggest that this actual coefficient should not be zero. Okay, that's what that's saying to us here. Okay, now I don't know whether this is actually true here. I looked like it was something different earlier on. Okay, uh, when I look at Ryanair Holdings and when I look at the 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 slope of the line two nine two, the question is whether that should be zero, whether it should be a slope of zero, or whether it really is a slope of two nine two. And what you can actually see here is that the, the number I get here, the p-value, is 4.47 by 10 to the minus 6, which is effectively 0 0.00000447, okay? Which is extremely less than 0 0.05. So we know that this is real, yeah? Okay, well, well, we can actually trust this, yeah? That was a real observation, okay? So that's important, yeah. But I suppose for this, for this analysis, we're really important, we're interested in this equation, okay? Uh, another thing is in relation to the overall ANOVA, which is uh, how reliable is the overall model, okay? And to actually figure out the overall reliability of the model, we look at the significance of the ANOVA. So if the significance is less than 0 0.05, well then that's evidence to suggest that the that the model is reliable, okay? In this case, it's 4.47 by 10 to the minus 6, yeah, okay, which is really, really small, which actually happens to be the same as that p-value there, if you, notice, if you notice that. Look, we can go into them sort of things, uh, maybe in one of the more advanced videos, yeah. Uh, so, come here, hopefully this was uh, somewhat intuitive. Uh, this was an example of how to undertake a simple linear regression uh, using Excel's data analysis tool pack where we had a single independent variable and we had a single dependent variable. What we were really interested in was we were interested in these two coefficients here so that we could actually build the equation of the line. Okay. Uh, so guys, once again, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I do hope that this video was somewhat helpful. Okay, so thanks for your time. Bye bye.